Hello, so in this video we are going to do um, an SD card flashing to bring up the latest from Beagle Board Foundations, Beagle Y AI board. Now to start this board up, of course you need the board. In addition, you need a few additional stuff as well. You'll need an SD card which is should be at least be 10 gig sized. Uh, what I'm using here is a SanDisk SD card of 32 gigs, but you could have 64 gig, 128, 256, etc. Pick something that is big enough because you're not just booting up the image, but you also would like to work on something. And nowadays AI models are big. Um, this is one of the standard options that you have. The other option, and we'll do a video on that as well, is to boot it up using an SSD which will probably give you uh, better data throughputs and SSDs come at 250 gig plus uh, sizes. This is a Raspberry Pi hat. Uh, this is the version 1. There is also version 2 which more or less works the similar similar way. Uh, this is an option as well. But for this video, we'll focus on the SD card because that's how you would start up this as well. In addition to that, uh, for the actual display, uh, this uses a min, uh, micro HDMI, uh, so you need a micro HDMI adapter, micro HDMI to HDMI adapter or micro HDMI to HDMI cable, DP adapter, blah, blah, blah. Whatever your choice is, right now the version that I'm using is a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. Uh, I also have a monitor with me, uh, which is an HDMI monitor over here, it doesn't have a touch screen. This is something that I bought off Amazon, uh, something I use for my standard testing. It's a 1080p display, uh, nothing fancy in there. Uh, in addition to interact with the display, I have a um, USB keyboard and mouse, wireless, uh, the standard Logitech keyboard mouse, I mean wired keyboard and mouse also should work fine. That's more or less what you need in addition of course the power supply. Uh, use a Raspberry Pi 5 power supply but for me I like to use my phone chargers which seems to work just as fine as well. So this is an Anchor phone charger, charger that I use. Um, I don't know, you can see the power settings, etc. But just go to beagleboard.org, you'll see the latest about what the power supply requirements are, etc. Just use that. In this section, we will look at the actual flashing and customization aspects. Um, if you go to the beagleboard.org website uh, and you were to Look for the boards that you have. Uh, in my case, I'm using a Beagle Y AI and scroll down. Uh, you find the section called the software images and you click on it. You get the very latest image to flash on the board. Now, uh, I'm going to use an engineering image which is not yet released externally. Uh, it'll be released once the final version is tagged. Uh, there are three types of images that you'll find uh, on the Beagle website. One is XFCE, which is a X Windows based uh, non accelerated basic UI, uh, but it's rock solid. Uh, but it uses the CPU for all the graphic elements to do. The other one is called Cinnamon Images, which is what we are working on right now. Uh, it is GUI, uh, GPU accelerated UI, uh, where you get Firefox and Chromium and others to be also G GPU accelerated, which is what some of you might prefer. Uh, so if you're going to run like WebGL games, you would probably want Cinnamon. The third one is a more minimal system, which is just a basic shell prompt. Um, and that would be preferable to some people who like basic shell, don't care about the GUI interfaces, all they want is a serial port, they're up and running. Most of the networking applications would probably do that. Uh, in our case, I'm going to demonstrate this with cin Cinnamon, but the rules are very similar to uh, any image that you're taking. Uh, I have already downloaded the latest image here, uh, which is the latest Cinnamon image. Uh, in addition, we need a flashing tool uh, for which I use Bellina. So you go to hr.bellina.io and uh, click on download Bellina. It comes to this version. The version that I like using is the portable image version, um, which is pretty simple. Uh, so if you, and of course, I need to put my SD card in. I forgot that, sorry. So let's insert the SD card into the SD card reader. Of course, you need an SD card reader to be able to flash this. Uh, let's close all these windows off and come here, start the etcher. 
and once HRS started up, you say pick from flash this image and you select what SD card um, folder that you want to use and you click on flash. Of course, it will come up with this little uh, window which you say yes to and it will start flashing. Now it will take a little bit of time, a couple of windows, those shell prompts will pop up uh, as it does its job. Uh, essentially it's a compressed disk image that we just downloaded. So it has to decompress it before it starts writing onto the flash. Take around 10 to 20 minutes for the flashing. Oh yeah, uh, this thing little shell comes up, you say cancel. And that should be more or less it. And it will go into the flashing mode. Okay, uh, we should rejoin in another round 10 20 minutes. So, at this point, flashing is complete, right? So, I'm going to close this thing up and we are going to go and reinsert the SD card once more because we now need to do something that is extremely important. Let's go through it. So uh, if you folks are aware, there's something that has been happening in the industry in recent days. So both European Union and UK and United States and China have um, started new rules in terms of cybersecurity, uh, especially on final products. And we do consider Beagle Y as a part of the puzzle uh, and many of the you know, um, cyber security requirements is something that we would like to uh, make sure we have infrastructure in place for. Now, this is especially going to be surprising for folks who are kind of used to the old Beagle way of doing things. Uh, because remember, the way that you boot, you know, log into a um, Beagle image has been Debian and temp root, temp, temp password. Uh, and then you could run sudo commands, etc. This, this was this has been very standard before, but that's no longer the case. Okay, and this has been done with a specific reason. Mostly, um, the way that we are trying to evolve this is that by default the disk image will be locked down, so that you, when you are logging in for the first time via serial port, for example, you would have you would be forced to change your password at the bare minimum. Uh, but the better way of doing this is to flash the image just like as we did right now and then modify a configuration file and do the bare minimum changes that we need to do to you know remove the default uh, settings in. Now why are we doing this? Uh, I'm just picking up the example uh, from uh, sorry one extra a from the UK department. So if you look at the various examples that they give, uh, you will see, a default password, weak passwords. This is this is the standard way that products have been compromised uh, in the in the wild, and that's why you have so many botnets flying around and doing weird stuff. So the least we can do is to remove that defaults out, right? That's like step number one. There are other cybersecurity aspects that we have to take care of, and we do provide some features for enabling that. But this is kind of the step number one that we have to do. Um, now, so let's go ahead and do that. So if you reinsert the image in, you'll find a file called sysconf.txt. Okay. Now open it with a notepad or whatever you choose to use. And in that text file, you'll see some basic logins, uh, login and, you know, user related stuff. The main stuff to change would be these two. Okay. Now. I usually don't prefer to have username as Beagle. Since we are looking for names, let's use Kong as the username. And Kong is king as the password. Right? Now, I also don't like the host name to be Beagleborn. I don't want to tell people that I am Beagleborn. I'm just going to use something ridiculous over here. Uh, the way to edit this file is that if you remove the comment, that line is active. Uh, the lines that are commented are the defaults that are kept in place. Um, and 
Anyway, so you can kind of customize this the way you want. All you have to do after flashing is to edit this file. Okay, and that's it. Uh, rest of the steps that we are doing will be on the actual board. So I'm going to show you um, by taking video of the board. Okay. All right. In this part, we are going to actually put all our stuff together. We have uh, the SD card that is flashed, right? And let's try to make sure everything is good. It is the SD card that we just flashed and modified the sysconfig about. Uh, so that is good. And we have our uh, micro HDMI to HDMI cable. My monitor is all set up. I'm going to plug in my HDMI cable to the micro HDMI. Plug that in. Okay. Now I'm going to keep the serial port available for us to see what's happening, but it is not really mandatory. For serial port, uh, there's a different video that shows us that. Uh, but this is the Raspberry Pi debug adapter. Uh, it's already plugged into my PC. Uh, we will see the details as we take the logs. Okay, so for actually doing the logs, ah, man. Okay. just plugged in the serial cable in. It should usually go in straight in. There we go. It's done. Uh, let me put in the SD card. SD card goes in one way. Right, it goes in this way in. Okay, it goes back in. You can see. Plugged it in. The power supply is plugged in. The USB dongle is plugged in for my boards. So now I can actually type stuff if it comes up. So we are all set to start capturing data in. Um, now, what you normally do, and you can look in the serial port right now. As we take the locks, uh, you just wait for the system to reboot itself. And all you have to do is plug in the power supply and just wait, and the display will come on. Okay. Now you can look at the serial port uh, just about now. Okay, this is the bootloader starting up. You'll see that the initial configuration that we have done, right? Uh, you, you let it boot essentially. Now, if you don't have the serial port, you can't see any of the console data that you are seeing here that we are uh, overlapping on top. You don't get to see that. Uh, all you see is the uh, LED glow up, and that's all you get to see. Okay. Now, as you notice over here, uh, probably if it's a little dark, you can see the color of the boot actually changes a little bit. There are two LEDs here, so the second LED starts blinking up. Uh, if you look at the serial port right now, it's doing a lot of stuff in the back end, but there's nothing getting printed on the serial console. Don't worry, just wait. It'll reboot on its own and it'll start up into Linux shell as you can see right now. And this time, all the configuration that we did would take effect. All right. And as you can see, the UI is up. This is the cinnamon UI that we have. And you can do stuff with the UI. Okay, like whatever you guys want to do. Now, all of this is uh, genome based. So, you can open up a terminal and remember, you can do stuff that you usually write, write now, do, etc. So, it's that simple.